Hi, my name is Walter Montero. I'm a real estate and mortgage agent here in Cambridge, Ontario, and I've had the privilege of serving our community since 1987. Over the years, I've met some great people here in our community in many different businesses and walks of life. Some, of course, are well known and others are some of the best kept secrets in town. So the purpose of this podcast is to share and introduce them to you. Welcome to the I Love Cambridge podcast. All right, great. So tell us a little bit about uh, the Homer Watson House and Gallery. What's going on over there? Um, so I'll just give you a little bit of a history of the, the gallery itself. Okay. Sure. Um, so it's located at 1754 Old Mill Road in Kitchener. Um, and it's in the house that was originally owned and lived in by Homer Watson. Okay. Um, so for those of you who don't know who Homer Watson is, uh, he was a Canadian landscape painter. Um, he's actually probably the first internationally celebrated Canadian artist. Um, so he gained popularity when he sold two paintings to Queen Victoria. Um, and then after that, his career kind of took off. Um, so he sort of paved the way for artists like the Group of Seven. Um, but yeah, so basically the, the gallery is in what was his house. So there's a few different parts to it. There's a, a gallery where we do contemporary exhibitions. There's um, the historic studio space, which was the um, part of the house where Homer Watson would create his artwork. So it's still very much set up in the way that he would have had it set up. Um, including with his original hand-painted frieze um, that he did along the wall, uh, showcasing some of the artists that inspired him. And then we also have studio spaces where we have um, art programming and classes for kids and adults. Okay, great. So I would assume now uh, with COVID-19, the gallery is closed, right? Yeah, at the moment, the gallery is shut. Okay. Um, we're hoping to reopen soon, but we obviously have to wait until uh, government guidance allows us to do so. Um, but we've started preparing a plan for how we might do that once the time comes. Okay. Um, but at the moment, we've sort of switched to a virtual um, offer. Okay, so tell us a little bit about that. What's, what, are you, what are you offering virtually? I think that's a good one for Sydney to take. Yeah, I'll jump in here now. Um, so we've actually moved all of our programming online. So we used to run all kinds of adult and children workshop classes, um, all centered around art. And we've since uh, moved everything to a virtual platform. So we use Zoom, um, just okay. as we are right now, um, yep. to host all of our classes. We run everything from watercolor and gouache painting to um, we have some ink and pen coming, uh, pen and ink, sorry, coming up, um, drawing classes. We've run sculpting classes as well. Um, so since basically the beginning of April, we've been running these classes and they've um, received some really awesome feedback. So we're excited to continue on um, offering virtual program even beyond COVID-19 um, and just as part of our regular programming now. Okay. Well, that's great. Okay. So tell me a little bit about the expertise of the people that participate in these classes. Are they beginners? Are they pros? Or are they in between? Yeah, they pretty much range from beginners to pros. So for example, um, watercolor is one of our most popular mediums. Um, so we have beginner, we have just kind of general classes just for people to kind of dabble in. We run just one-off workshops, um, but we also have intermediate classes and a lot of our um, participants are recurring. So they come back for class after class. So we do get a lot of students who get to know the basics and are ready to move on. Um, we also offer classes for children and that ranges from six-year-olds who have never picked up a brush to 12-year-olds who are um, getting into more technical aspects of art as well. Very good. Okay. Um, and uh, so you told us a little bit about the uh, uh, Homer Watson himself. Um, talk about a little bit about the history of the site, I guess. Uh, can you give us a little insight on that? Yeah. So, um, obviously, the house was, I, I mean, it was built by um, architect Ferry. But um, the Watsons moved in fairly soon after that. They always liked the house. So once Homer Watson's art career took off, he was able to purchase the house. Um, he did put two extensions on it. So that was the gallery and the studio space. Um, but after he passed away, his sister, Phoebe Watson, who was also an artist, 
um, sort of took over the site and managed it. Um, she acted as the curator and continued on um, celebrating his legacy. Um, after she died, then um, it became the Dune School of Fine Arts. So there was a few different people involved in uh, making that happen. I see. Um, but yeah, the Dune School of Fine Arts was modeled after the Banff School of Fine Arts. So okay. um, it was supposed to be sort of a high-end art school. Um, and there were some really uh, well-noted artists that taught at the Dune School of Fine Arts. So one that probably most people would recognize would be uh, Fred Varley of the Group of Seven. So he taught there for yep. about a year. Um, so it was a really successful school as far as uh, content. Um, but then eventually uh, the city of Kitchener uh, took over the property. So they now own the property and then it's run by uh, the Homer Watson House, House Foundation, um, which is us. Um, and then we tried to do similar things to what the history of the site was. So it's a bit of a gallery, a bit of a, a museum, and then a little bit of a art programming school. I see, okay, great, okay. So when somebody goes through it, how long would somebody, like obviously when you're open after this crisis is behind us, mm -hmm. how long would somebody normally take to, to walk through the, uh, the gallery? Um, so it's quite a small gallery really. So it really depends on uh, how invested you are in the current exhibition. Um, okay. But most people take around between half an hour and an hour in the site. Okay. So we've got the sort of historic component with information and artwork by Homer Watson. And then we also have our contemporary exhibition. So right now we've got a um, quilt exhibition by Studio Art Quilt Associates. Um, so that's the one we're hoping to open to the public soon. And we know in the past that's got a very big audience that do like to stay for quite a long time to look at all the details of the quilts and stitching techniques and everything like that. Okay. And, and how often do the, uh, these change up? Do they change up once a year, a couple of times a year? Um, it sort of varies. At the moment, they're changing fairly frequently. Obviously, the um, pandemic has postponed and delayed a lot of our planned exhibitions, but we have at least four a year. Um, so they change fairly regularly. So um, and then we often have more than one exhibition at one time. So they might have like half the gallery for one exhibition and half for another. Very good. And any anticipation in terms of when uh, when you'll be open again? Is there any kind of date earmarked um, at all? Or are you just kind of waiting for the queue? So we're hoping for early July, but again, that's entirely based on um, when we're permitted to open. But that's sort of when we, we think we could manage opening by that point. So fingers crossed that's, that's when it will happen, but we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Sure. And what about, uh, like, uh, what kind of traffic do you get through there? Like, how many people get through there on an annual basis? Um, to be honest, annually we have sort of, um, we don't have very accurate information about that, but it, we get uh, on an average, so weekends we tend to be busier because people can come in, obviously not during a pandemic. Um, but yeah, we have between sort of 10 and 15 people in on the weekend. Um, and then during the week, it really varies depending on the time of year. Often it's quite quiet, so it's a nice sort of um, quite personal experience. Um, but And a lot of people struggle to find us because we're in the middle of a subdivision. So um, sure. we're, not, we're not often very busy, but we are looking to um, spread the word about us. And hopefully um, after we are allowed to open again, we'll get a little bit more um, visitors in. Great. And uh, what's the cost of admission? Um, so at the moment, admission is by donation. So there's a recommended $5 donation. Um, okay. But yeah. Very good. Awesome. Well, this is great. I mean, uh, I, uh, you know, I often take Homer Watson. I just never really thought it through. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, very good. Now, is there, um, uh, you had mentioned that uh, COVID-19 is keeping you quite busy. What, what has changed that has is really testing your schedule, I guess. <laughs> um, well, I think it's just partly keeping up with um, recommendations, guidelines, um, you know, looking after your collection while you're not open is another challenge. Um, but also the whole virtual programming side is actually quite a lot of work. 
Um, so just maintaining the website, keeping things up to date, looking after social media, because we're trying to continue to engage our normal audiences um, without them being able to come here. So it just means we have to put in a little bit more legwork to make sure that we're um, keeping them in mind still. Sure. Okay, good. Um, now, is there um, uh, anything in particular, any particular question that I didn't ask you that I should have? Uh, no, I think that was good. I don't know if there's anything you wanted to share as well, Sydney. Sure. Um, well, just that you can find all of our program listings on our website. So if anyone's interested in taking an online class, we have everything from um, free demos on Facebook and YouTube to um, printed out step-by-step -step instructions for different art, or you can participate in a paid online class if you're um, interested in taking it kind of that step further. Awesome. And then in terms of the funding, you had mentioned something about donations, uh, people that walk through. How is, how is it fun? Obviously, it's got to be funded through other sources as well. Yeah, so our primary funding comes uh, by our, our art programming. Okay. Um, so obviously, the virus has been quite challenging quite for us right, because yeah. our main source of income has, has gone. Um, we do have some uh, individual donors um, and grants and things that we get, but it's, it's been challenging at the moment. Yes, I'm sure it has been. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, what, so uh, websites uh, or ways to contact you? Yeah, so uh, homerwatson.on.ca is our website where you can find most of the information that you need um, about programming. We've also got some virtual art exhibitions on there at the moment. So even though you can't come in, you can still uh, look them up and enjoy art. Um, so at the moment, we've got the last five years by um, an artist named Didi Gajanski. Um, and then we've also got a virtual component for the quilt exhibition, which you can see on there as well. Um, and at the moment, there's also a, an article on Homer Watson. So if you're interested in learning more about Homer Watson and his uh, connection to the group of seven um, in Canada's History magazine, this, this um, issue, there is an article written by Nicole Martin about it that's quite interesting as well if you wanted to learn more. Oh, great. <laughs> So I, I've got to ask you before I let you go, Tabitha, are you in a relation to the Watson family? In <laughs> no, ironically, I, I ended up getting married just before I got the job. So <laughs> I became a Watson just in time. But well, there yeah, you go. Perfect. Kind of a strange link. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, hey, it's a great way. Do whatever you can to, to uh, sweeten up that resume, I guess, yeah, right? definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Well, I, I'd like to thank you both for your time. I certainly appreciate it. And uh, I, I'm sure our, our audience would love to hear about it. And uh, we'll give you a heads up once it's uh, uh, gone live, which will probably be about two weeks. And uh, you guys stay safe. And uh, hopefully we'll be open uh, soon to enjoy the uh, gallery. Yeah, sounds so good.